Hey, this is the Blue Dolphin Queen and welcome to my channel. I know it's been a long time, but school kept me pretty busy. But I'm back. So today I'm going to be reviewing the TV show Medici the Magnificent. So, it's a three season show with about an hour long episode for each episode. So pretty time consuming if you ask me. But I definitely want to say it's worth the watch. But this is rated mature. Like there's way too many inappropriate scenes which really kind of ruined the show for me. Like I want to say that's the main negative aspect of this show. The reason I actually started watching this show is because lately I've been watching historical political dramas like Rain and the Crown. And I guess I really like that genre. And my favorite character in Reign was Catherine de Medici, and I found this sh show, so I was like, ooh, I should watch it. You can find a link to my Reign TV show review at the end of this video. But anyway, I started the show, and the pilot was meh. Like, it wasn't attracting me enough, and it wasn't really pulling me in. But I watched it anyway, since I didn't have another show to watch. Then slowly the show started pulling me in, and the plot kept turning into a storyline that pulled me into the 15th century Italy. It started with Giovanni de Medici, who founded, who kind of founded the Medici Bank. Actually, started with his murder, and their two kids, Lorenzo and Cosmo, were trying to find out who was the murderer. Through a bunch of different events that took place during season one, I found Contessina de Medici, Cosmo's wife, to be one of my favorite characters. She was strong-willed and an extremely powerful woman at the time. She always helped Cosmo, and they had the same vision until the point where Cosmo was exiled because Contesina tried to save him. That really upset me because Cosmo was mad at his wife for saving his life. And then he had a kid with the slave woman, which upset me even more. So I was really drawn into the show by that point. Then seasons two and three were an entirely different cast, which had its own different take on the Medici family. This was about the generation of Cosmo's grandson and son. Cosmo's grandson, Lorenzo the Magnificent, was immediately shown as one who could take charge and lead the family. I could immediately see that he had as much potential as he overthrew his father's position in the Signoria. It was extremely interesting as almost all of season 2 was pitting the Pazzi against the Medici. It was interesting to see how Jacopo de Pazzi was so manipulative and also kind of how dumb the characters were for getting influenced by him so easily. But he definitely kept the show running. But because the show was so interesting, Giuliano's death really hit me. Giuliano was the brother of Lorenzo the Magnificent, and I felt that he just had so much more left with him reforming and overcoming the death of his love, Simonetta. His mother, Lucrezia de' Medici, wife of Piero de' Medici, who was also the son of Cosimo, always tried to make Lorenzo include him in all of the banking activities. And then Giuliano had a chance for reform, but the Pazzi killed him during the assassination attempt at both Lorenzo and Giuliano. I cried and it was so sad, but I got to see their revenge. When the Pazzis were hanged, I forgot to mention, Lorenzo had a wife named Clarice Orsini, who initially had no intention of marrying anyone since she wanted to become a nun, but then she was convinced to marry Lorenzo by her close friend, who also happens to be Lorenzo's half-uncle, Cosimo and the slave woman's kid. But then she struggles to find Lorenzo's love in the beginning since Lorenzo was already drawn to another woman, which bugged me because Clarice had such a good heart and she only wished for peace and stability. But then season three starts off with Giuliano's illegitimate son returning home at such a young age when his mother is killed. Then Lucrezia takes an immediate liking to the boy, whose name was Giulio. Then there were many plots hatched here and there which keeps the show moving until there's another huge sad scene. Lucrezia's death. That hit me hard as well because Lucrezia was literally the only character who remained in the show, although two different actresses portrayed her from season 1 to 3, and her care for Giulio and trauma after Giuliano's death was really devastating. But then the Medici family began to grow corrupt and turn away from the vision Lorenzo and Clarice originally held of it, and what Cosimo originally held of it as well. The treacheries of the family hit Clarice hard and Lorenzo began to sell away the family he said he fought for. By get, for example, by giving away one of his daughters so one of his sons could be Pope. Then Clarice died. Then Lorenzo died, and the show ended. But his death didn't really make me sad. He was extremely corrupt, but then again, only due to his advisor, Bruno Bernardi. Although, he did make many accomplishments, I must say the cost, at least based on the show, had the same weight. But how could a family maintain power and stability in that time? 
I'm not justifying the wrongs, but there really was no other way. There would always be corruption. However, I must say, a huge plus to the show was the historical accuracy. Unlike Rain, the dresses, the scenes, everything was just so historically accurate, it almost took you back in time to the 15th century. The events were also historically accurate, such as the assassination known as the Potsy Conspiracy. I was amazed at how the writers took the actual events and wove it into such a story that was so interesting and intriguing. I loved it. I couldn't believe it until I looked up many events and found out they were all true. They really did well on that one. The actors and actresses were also flawless and they portrayed the characters really well. I think I would give this show about an 8 out of 10. Literally, the only reason I personally didn't like it was because there were way too many inappropriate scenes. I wouldn't have really made a change to the storyline since it was a huge, nice way to reflect history. And it really did that, with huge accuracy as well, which was amazing. Last TV show to watch in 2021 as well. If you have any a different opinion about Medici the Magnificent or just any other TV show recommendations that I should watch, just let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe as well. Thanks for watching!